Stay humble, even when you're in trouble. Faith in God, don't give it to the devil. Face, make a nigga real humble. Looking for the trouble, but we living in the jungle. Humble, even when you're in trouble. Faith in God, don't give it to the devil. Face, make a nigga real humble. Looking for the trouble, but we living in the jungle. Appreciate you guys tuning in. Really appreciate you guys tuning in. Um, again, Butter featuring Smurgy Smurg. Man, I I'm not introducing you anymore. I want you to introduce yourself, Butter, alongside Smurgy with Smurgy Smurg. Smurgy Smurg. What's going on? How's everybody feeling? Uh, Saturday night. Well, it's officially really like Sunday morning, but uh. There's a new show that we're announcing that's going to be like a sub-show of In Search of God. It's going to be called The Saturday Night Mix-Up. And this gives us an opportunity to talk about multiple topics. You know what I'm saying? Basically, what's on our mind. You know what I mean? And it's going to be multiple things, things that have affected us throughout the week. Um, again, always with the ultimate theme of spreading peace, positivity, and humanity. And... Uh, Always in the name of God, because God is the is the wind in our sails, and that's what this show is about. In search of God, because we think all paths lead there. So let's start with a prayer. I like to start by saying thank you, God, for giving us the opportunity in this forum, and this voice, and this outreach to be able to touch people's lives, to spark positive thought, to bring people together. This is not about, about criticizing people or breaking people down or disunity. It's about unity and it's about you. So we thank you for the ability. We thank you for the voice. We thank you for creation. We thank you for our minds and, and our uh, just everything. Would you like to add anything to that, Smurgy Smurf? You tired? She's like, why do you do these shows so late? <laughs> I mean, I get off. I keep it absolutely 100. I get off work about 10.30 p.m. And it just takes me some time to wind down. And then she wants to eat. And let's keep it real. As you guys probably already know, she's expecting. Tell them how far along you are. Um, almost five months. Almost five months. And, um, you know, she, she gets those cravings, those after... And listen, I'm right there with her, man. So, you know, it's hard to be around somebody that's eating. You want to eat, too. You know what I'm saying? I want to eat, too. So, anyway, so by the time we kind of get off, we get settled, we do what we got to do. Uh, see after my mama. My mama. Uh, it's usually like around now. So, again, this is the, the Saturday night mix-up. We, You know, one thing I want to shout out, first of all, shout out Spreaker. is an awesome forum. Uh, we done upgraded the show, you know, before, as you guys know, the shows were limited to a 45 minute duration. And now we done, we done threw our hands in the, in the air and we got it up to, it's now a three hour. We can do three hours for a show if we, we decided, I'm not sure that we'll, uh, you know, if we'll ever really go that long, but we do have that capability. So peace, peace. Thank you God for the upgrade. Word up, so you know we we're we're enthusiastic about that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but we're just happy to be able to to bring you this forum and and, and bring you our voice. So so what's on our minds on the Saturday night, uh, 
tip other than uh, sleeping, Smurgy Smurgy. You sent me some really, some really cool quotes, some really hardcore quotes that I thought that was really inspiring. Uh, any any of them in particular that you'd like to share? <clears throat> Come on now. People are listening in. They could be any place else. You could be any place else doing anything else with anybody else. And you decided to tune in and listen to Butter and Smurgy. So what's good, Smurgy? Tell me. T- t- bring some positivity. What you got to share with these people tonight? Well, um, I was reading some quotes tonight, just looking on goodreads.com. Shout out to goodreads.com. And uh, just looking at literary quotes mostly. And it's just so disjointed and everything. But it's ultimately commentaries on society. Commentaries on society. Have to say. You know, what these writers have to say. Right. And, and what did you run into that was interesting? Well, a lot of stuff. But it got me thinking about, in general, you know... Um, how society you know most of us are we we're so intrinsically like tied in with society and humanity but we spend most of our time like fleeing from it okay you know? okay i mean elaborate what do you mean by that smurgy well here's a quote here okay Man was born for society. However little he may be attached to the world, he can never wholly forget it or bear to be wholly forgotten by it. Disgusted at the guilt or absurdity of mankind, the misanthrope flies from it. He resolves to become a hermit and buries himself in the cavern of some gloomy rock. While hate inflames his bosom, possibly he may feel contented with his situation. But when his passions begin to cool, When time has mellowed his sorrows and healed those wounds which he bore with him to his solitude, can you think that content becomes his companion? Ah, no. No longer sustained by the violence of his passions, he feels all the monotony of his way of living, and his heart becomes the prey of ennui and weariness. He looks (laughs) and finds himself alone in the universe. The love of society revives in his bosom, And he pants to return to the world which he has abandoned. Nature loses all her charms in his eyes. No one is near him to point out her beauties or share in his admiration of her excellence and variety. Propped upon the fragment of some rock, he gazes upon... Okay, this is very... You're kind of losing me. Yeah, well, I thought it was going to tie into... And what exactly? You had me in the first couple lines, man. Read the first couple lines again. I want to, I want to uh, process that. What did it say? How did it start? Well, it was not even talking about what I thought it was talking about. I was just kind of scanning through, and I thought it was, um, you know, because we t- so. Based on some certain current events that are going on right now, right, and that are building up to November sixth. What's um, going on for those that don't know? What's happening in November sixth? Well, there's an election. It's an election year an for election. America. Um, and I don't want to talk about any specifics about the election. Yeah, just to let y'all know. By the way, I wanted really to do a whole show escape. about the election, and. Uh, and she wasn't really feeling the whole idea about doing an election show. Why is that? Could you tell them why? I know I know this, this show is in search of God, but anything that we do, we do it you know, in search of God, with God in, in mind and with humanity in mind. Uh, don't you think that the election has something to do with that? When, I mean, why, you why were you so vehemently... Has to do with anything. So why were you so vehemently against doing an election show? Because, well, number one, I think that um, that people are too into it. I mean, you think it's all all we hear and all we talk about. Hey, just to be absolutely honest with you guys, before we started this show, I was watching CNN and all they talk about in CNN right now is the election. 
Trump, they probably talk about him 90% of the time, and then 10% of the time it, it's Hillary. So you're saying that, I mean, it's, it's been too much? Are you, are you, are you election now? Is that what you're saying? Well, this was, this quote started out talking about that somebody, this, this character who basically leaves society and becomes a hermit, you know, at least for a period of time, because he's disgusted with either the things that humanity and society has done, or espouses the beliefs they espouse, or just the, in general, the absurdity of some of it. But, you know, the reality is, as you were talking about earlier, that, that, um, And then I agree with it, you know, obviously that, that isolating yourself from things and being by yourself is not the path to some kind of enlightenment or, um, higher realization. Right. And just to jump right in, you know, we was having a conversation and I, I, I used to always think about like, what, how would I achieve or to pursue the height of my spirituality and I always had this vision like I was telling her that one day I would go up to one of the highest mountains in like Nepal or something and I would eschew all civilization and interaction with other human beings and I would be out there in a loincloth barefooted and just on top of a mountain like doing like ohm or something like that but I was thinking about it in the midst of my work day, now just to let you guys know, I work from home. And in addition to the fact that I work from home, you know, I also have, you know, a family here. I have five from my, uh, from my uh, previous marriage. Stephanie has two from hers. So we have seven young people spanning from 21 year old, the eldest, down to a seven year old. Then we have two dogs. Could you tell them how? Tell them. T- I think we have four, four dogs. <laughs> wow, we have two. To tell them what kind of dogs we got, Samara. We have a Rottweiler, a Beagle mix. Maddie's the Rottweiler. The Beagle mix is Max, who's like, oh man, he's loud. He's super duper loud. And then uh, we have two Chihuahua mix, because they mix with Chihuahua and like this uh, Eskimo dog or what have you, but. So in the midst of being here working and, you know, needing to be in, in a quiet environment, which I got to say, you know, we keep it pretty quiet. There's still a lot of things that's going on. And we got a parrot. Tell him about Larry. Yeah, he's, he's here too. We got Larry. Larry's our Kanye, right? I like birds. He likes birds. But um, so in the midst of all that, you know, you know, you still find it's hard. People say that when they're home, you know, they're, they're sectioned off. And the ideal is that you separate yourself from everything. But still, in a way, you're sort of still connected and engaged. I mean, even the people that I work with from time to time, you hear things coming from their backgrounds or, you know, their daughter might come on the scene or, or you know, or something. I mean, they're always somehow connected to what's going on. Even my trainer... Uh, when we were training, like her dog would come in every once in a while or what have you. So anyway, my point is that, you know, I used to think that attaining peace or spirituality, what have you, was just like going off and separating yourself from society. So I guess it goes with what you were just saying. To me, the re- the real peace is being able to be at peace in the midst of the chaos because anybody could be in seclusion and kind of be at peace, you know, but I mean, yeah, I think I was, I was just reading another quote that was talking that, that people who live in nature and peaceful settings, they better be peaceful because, you know, I don't remember the quote exactly, but, uh, you know, um, 